Hi there, I'm Cecilia Jane, welcome to my channel, and today we're gonna to talk about how to sustain yourself as an artist or make money as an artist. So this is gonna be kind of a sit down and talk video. I'm not really like doing a tutorial or anything. So if that's not something you're really interested, um, please head on over to my channel and find some of my other videos. I do have some tutorials and time lapses and things like that that might interest you more. But if you do like sit down talk advice type videos, then stay tuned. So firstly, before we kind of get into the nitty gritty, hard details um i kind of want to just give you guys some motivation i know the term starving artist gets passed around a lot and i know if you are trying to be an artist especially if you're a teenager or something you will get discouraged by adults which is super frustrating because they don't even know what they're talking about half the time so i'm here to tell you that there are thousands if not millions of jobs in the art world the idea of a starving artist doesn't really exist if you're willing to push yourself and look for these opportunities and people really fail to realize how many art type jobs there are there's people that design just text there's people that design packaging there's people that design concept art there's people that design storyboarding for movies for video games for animations etc and if you're interested in going to college as an artist which uh, i could talk about in another video if it's worth it or not you'll be introduced to this huge array of jobs that exist in the art world i know sometimes i would get down on myself and i'd be like well what am i really gonna do and i'm still yet to figure it out but i still am sustaining myself as an artist so that's why i'm deciding to talk about this so yeah just kind of to reiterate there is just this huge vast marketplace of jobs and careers in the art world so if people tell you there's not they don't really know what they're talking about i mean just research art jobs like i said concept art um editorial design etc etc the list goes on and on again i can make a video about like all these separate kind of subgroups so if you guys want me to make a video about some common art jobs let me know. But yeah, if you're willing to work for it, there's gonna be a job out there for you. And in that idea, I wasn't even including freelance, which is a whole another ballpark of jobs out there for you guys. So I kind of bring up this idea of if you're willing to work for it. So it's kind of what we're gonna be talking about next is how to get the motivation and the drive to really work for it and to get this art job. The art world can be a competitive field, so that's why it's really important to kind of hustle i know that word gets thrown around a lot and can kind of be annoying but it is important to really stay up on you know the art world um what people are looking for it's not like if you go to vet school and you're pretty much ensured a vet job right away with the art world you kind of have to look into it more do your research and maybe even go the extra mile which i'm not trying to discourage you by saying that just trying to let you know that um you do want to stick out and you do want to offer great product okay so how to get motivation first things first is you're going to need motivation like i said especially if you're going to freelance which is most of the art jobs out there because things like concept art and editorial design you could be having your own specific job for that but oftentimes you will be a freelancer hired by them and it'll be like a project you work for over a month and then you have to find another project so that's freelance so if you are your own boss um, nobody's gonna be telling you what to do your deadlines etc you need to be on top of that you need to be constantly searching for jobs if that's how you sustain yourself there are other ways to kind of like get around that but you're gonna need to be on top of your stuff and you know like I said be your own boss and keep yourself in charge so again I'm kind of gonna go into some specifics and tips and tricks but another little tip is you're gonna want to pick something you're excited about Let's say you're doing custom jewelry with like names on it or something very specific like that and you find out after a few weeks of doing it you're just not really into it. That's definitely not going to be something you want to pursue over a period of time. Of course any job over time you know kind of has that job like Mars. Now, of course, like any type of job is going to start to feel like a job after a while, but it is all about your mindset. You know, you have to like stay in check, be positive, and I'm going to get into that a little bit further. But yeah, try to have a good mindset and try to find something that you think you'll be able to stay excited about for a while. So for me personally, my main source of income right now is pet portraits. If you want one, uh, check out my Instagram. I also do other commissions, but people mostly uh, hire me for pet portraits. But I'm not super, super excited about every single project I work on. But that's just kind of the name of the game. But overall, I would say I'm very interested in painting and like to paint, so that works. Just something that's not gonna lose your interest over time. And also, you can always continue to offer new products and new services, so that's kind of a way to get around that. So this may kind of be considered like a silly step in order to say dedicated, but like one of the most important things for me personally to stay motivated is positive affirmation. If you guys aren't familiar with what positive affirmations are, I'll put a quick little definition right here. But for me personally, oh my God, 
New speed racer. But for me personally, I have a little journal and maybe not every single day, but maybe like a few times a week. I'll write like, what are my goals for the week? Um, what I wanna accomplish? And the kind of the main thing for positive affirmations for me is not writing them like, I wanna complete two commissions this week. It's, I will complete two commissions this week. If you kind of already have that positive mindset that you're gonna get something done, it definitely helps you get it done in the future. Really everything in life is about mindset and I could do a whole video on that. But yeah, just try to like tell yourself things are going to happen, they will happen. Really the key to success is just believing yourself, which I know is a little cliche and cheesy, but trust me, positive affirmations and telling yourself you're gonna get something done work. And the last little tip I have in this kind of like segment um, to stay motivated is to discipline yourself. And again, that kind of goes with the idea of you are your own boss, so you need to discipline yourself. But you know, think of what you're not good at. Maybe it's not meeting your deadlines, so you need to discipline yourself and put kind of rules in order to make sure you meet those deadlines. This could be a very personal thing, but for me personally, mine is to make sure I try to get up early at least every day. It kind of depends because I'm also a full-time student, so my schedule's a little wish-washy. But um, I try to get up early. I try to get up at like seven which may or may not be early by your definitions, but it is for me. And that kind of helps me, um, you know, stay motivated in the morning and get more done. As the day goes on, I kind of lose motivation, which I feel like is a common theme with people. So maybe that will work for you. Again, you can make your own schedule, which I'm going to talk about here in a second. Sorry if the lighting keeps doing this. Um, I've tried to set up the lighting for like an hour almost so i apologize <laughs> but yeah so you may need a specific schedule you may need like specific rules like get up at seven find out what kind of discipline you need for yourself and then put those rules in order and really try to stick with them i found for me the most important thing is if you have something like get up at seven monday through thursday or something like that never not do that because the second you kind of break that schedule then you kind of like let yourself be more lenient if you just never break it you're going to be more prone to not break it again there's there's always exceptions, you know, like emergencies or maybe you stayed up way too late last night from something, I don't know. There's always exceptions, you know, don't don't be too hard on yourself, but you do need to be disciplined. So whatever your specific schedule is, stick to that, learn your disciplines and just live by that. Again, this may differ for everyone. Maybe it's make sure you work uh, 16 hours a week. Maybe it's make sure you get up early etc etc okay this next little segment we're going into is going to be talking about specifically money which i know the idea of money scares a lot of people but firstly like again just with a little positive note um really try to think of money as something good a lot of us have this really bad mindset towards money and it's something in, in your mindset that you can kind of rewire to think of money as a tool and something that's helpful i've talked about this book in a few of my other videos but check out the book you are a badass by jen cicero i'll put it right here but she talks about positive affirmations and pretty much everything it's one of my favorite books it's super amazing i definitely recommend it but she talks about how a lot of us view money negatively but instead we should try to rewire our brains and think of money is something that can help us, something that provides us with materials, etc. just does a lot for us. I know money can be evil and I know it can be like the root of destruction, but just bear with me and try to have a good mindset towards these different things I'm talking about. So firstly, in order to sustain yourself, you're gonna need to figure out what you need to make monthly. You could also think about it what you need to make weekly or even daily, however you do it. That's your prerogative. You know, that's your own like personal way of dealing with it. I personally do monthly just because like my bills and such are monthly. So when you're thinking about what you need to make monthly, it's really important that you be honest with yourself. How much am I spending on groceries? How much am I spending on gas? How much are my bills? How much is my rent, etc. So basically, Basically, I'm telling you to budget a little bit and again just be honest with yourself there's so many different expenses in our lives that we don't even think about or take into account so maybe keep track of your expenses for a month or maybe a few months take an average of that and then have that be your goal to shoot for of course you always want to make sure you make more just a little bit more than your what you need per month just you know different things happen accidents happen car accidents happen your cat needs to go to the vet speaking from personal experience. Um, but yeah, you know, different things come up in life and you don't always wanna be just barely making it. You need to be making a little bit more than what your monthly bills and such are. Now you need to think about realistically, how am I gonna reach that? So the way that I kind of specifically do it is I think about how many hours per week do I need to make in order to make enough money for the week, in order to make enough money for the month. So this is just a general example, not a specific personal example, but let's say you need to make $800 a month, 
well, there's four weeks in a month, so you need to be making $200 per week. And then you think about how many hours do I need to work per week to get $200. And if your product or whatever you're doing is very specific of your income, like let's say every single product is $20, then you say, I need to sell or make X amount of products in order to get $200 a week. Again, this is another topic that I could do a whole video about, like specific budgeting, how much you should charge for your product, but these are just kind of general tips. So depending on your situation, it's gonna be kind of thinking about how many products do I need to make per week or how many commissions do I need to complete or how many hours you can kind of think about it a few different ways depending on your situation I'm probably going to say this at the end too but if there's anything super specific that you're just having trouble figuring out feel free to pop into my Instagram and just talk to me I love to talk to you guys um, and I can try to offer some advice I don't know everything of course but um, I can try to help you guys figure out your unique situation if you want. And then one little tip I'm gonna offer you guys for this kind of money section is what I do personally is I print out a calendar at the beginning of month, my printer has a setting for it, and I keep track of how many hours I spend per week, and I also keep track of how much money I'm making per week. This kind of just helps me hold myself accountable. I need to be making X amount of money per week so I can keep track. Maybe it's Thursday, I still need to make $30. How am I gonna do that? Also, if you don't really have a good idea of like how much to charge, a really good thing to do is keep a spreadsheet. So for me personally with my pet portraits, I keep a spreadsheet of every single commission I do, how long it takes me and what I charge. Then I can kind of calculate my average wage and how much I'm making. Again, this is gonna differ situation to situation and kind of what kind of product you're selling. I also kind of forgot that I'm including this section, but I wanna talk very briefly about pricing. Again, it could be a whole nother video. Let me know in the comments if there's anything specifically you want a video about, I would love to talk about it. But pricing is a really tricky thing. Generally, what I would say is to take into account your supplies. So your supplies, you again, you wanna be honest with yourself. Some people will just say, oh, it's just the canvas. That's not true. You're using your paint, you're using your paint brushes. Um, for me specifically, I use palette spray, I use a varnish. If you're including your shipping materials, your bubble wrap, etc., you need to take into account all of the materials you're using. You can give yourself kind of a general price, but you never wanna cheat yourself. Um, if you're unsure, just do a little bit over, not anything crazy. In the same realm, kind of round up. Um, you never wanna like, have yourself short um, with your supplies. So think about how much your supplies cost per product, per commission, whatever you're doing. Even if it's something digital, like let's say you just do digital illustrations on your iPad, how long is your iPad gonna last? Maybe it's only gonna stick around for four years. So you need to be taking into account um, the wear and tear of your product. Again, if you're just like Photoshopping something on the computer, maybe you need to buy a new desktop every I don't know, six years or something like that. I sell stickers on Etsy um, and one year my printer just crapped out randomly. It was doing fine, I wasn't expecting it at all, but then I'm like $400 short. I don't know the specific price of my printer, maybe 300, 400. Anyways, it was a decent chunk of money. And where was I gonna get that money? Well, again, make sure you're taking your supplies into account. Even things like digital, like your desktop, your laptop, your printer, etc. Really be honest with yourself and evaluate these materials. And then the second part of this equation is to pay yourself an hourly wage. And this is really important, I wanna hone into you guys. Do not pay yourself minimum wage. Do not pay yourself less than minimum wage. You are worth more than that. Minimum wage is a job that anyone can complete. That is not something you are doing. You're doing a specific product that requires a skill or a talent. For example, if you're a plumber or an electrician, you're getting paid above minimum wage because you learned a specific skill set that not anybody can do. Same for painters, crafters, etc. Do not pay yourself minimum wage. Again, minimum wage can depend where you live. I think where I live, it's like around 13, 14 dollars an hour. So I of course pay myself more than that. Also take your skills into account. If you know you're not the best artist out there, maybe not charge like 70 dollars an hour, maybe charge something more like 25 dollars an hour, but definitely pay yourself more than minimum wage. I cannot like drill that into you guys enough. That is super important. You are not anybody. You have a specific skill set or talent. So again, charge yourself for supplies and then your hourly discount and then that's gonna be how much you should charge. That's kind of just a rough calculation. This is something really minor, but I just want to include it to hear because I know a lot of people think about it and it's discussed and you get asked it so this is talking about family discounts. So a lot of times you'll have these family members or friends in your life that'll be like hey like since I know you really well you want to maybe give me a little discount? I think that is just just say no just say no you can't afford to offer discounts. You know who can afford to offer discounts? Amazon because they're making billions and billions of dollars and 10% off is not going to make or break them but 10% 
might make or break you. I mean, there can be exceptions to this, of course, but for me personally, when people ask that to me, it just, it's kind of offending. I mean, I think your friends and your family, if anything, should be wanting to pay more. They should be wanting to tip you. And not, not saying like my friends and family do this all the time. It's been like two specific people that do it. It kind of gets on my nerves. I try to be nice about it. Of course, always be nice about it. You know, be nice to anyone about it, but just tell them straight up, you can't afford it. I need to pay my bills. This is how I'm making my money. I'm not gonna be able to pay my bills if I give everyone a discount. So don't feel obligated to offer family or friends discounts. Just simply tell them I need to pay my bills and this is how I'm paying my bills. And if I give you a discount, I might not be able to pay my bills. Do you want me to starve? Don't guilt trip them, be nice. Okay, so the next little segment is talking specifically kind of about what you're gonna make. So this is just kind of a quick note, but um, you have to make something that people want. The thing is we live in such a vast and large world that there's pretty much a market for everything. Is it gonna be a big enough market to sustain yourself as an artist? So you probably wanna stay away from things that are like fads that are in for a few months and then kind of go out. You could of course just stay on top of the fads the fades, fads, fads? You could of course just stay on top of the fads and continually keep doing whatever's kind of in, but that can be exhausting and you're gonna have to continually make new product. Just for this example, fidget spinners come to mind. I don't know if you guys remember those, but the things that you kind of like spin like this, I'll put a picture of it. Um, those were super, super in for what, maybe a year. And some people still love them, of course, but something like that, like, in the years after, you're not gonna really be able to make enough money. Of course, big corporations and stuff are, and that was just a specific example of like a fad, but just things like that. You're gonna wanna pick something that people are gonna like for a long time. So basically what I'm saying is there has to be a demand for the product you're making. People have to want it, it has to be something people like. If it's something super specific like, like let's say it's a character from a video game that's kind of indie or only a few people play, like that's specifically what you make is merch about them. Maybe that might not do that well. Generally, you're gonna do a lot better if it's a broader market. For example, I do pet portraits. A lot of people have pets, a lot of people like paintings, so it kind of works. I don't want to stray you away from doing something you're super excited about. Of course, always do that. Still sell it, um, but it just might not be something that you make your main income from, so just consider that. I know we all have our specific niches, like I'm trying to sell more of my surrealistic paintings, things like that, which people do like, but it's kind of harder to get into than just pet portraits. So the next little segment is to put yourself out there. Of course, take advantage of social media. I probably we don't have to tell you guys that if you're on YouTube right now. There's all these different social medias, you know, there's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, etc., etc. Um, kind of maybe play around with a few and see what works to your advantage. For me specifically, I've been getting a lot of my commissions through Facebook and through Instagram, and I'm trying other social medias, but you know, you just kind of have to play around and see what works for you. Hi guys, so my battery died while I was filming and I didn't notice for a second and just kept talking. So I'm gonna quickly fill in like the parts that got erased. This little section should hopefully be like less than a minute. So uh, just bear with me, we'll get back to my more polished shelf in just a second. So the last little part in that section of putting yourself out there is that you basically need to spend money to make money. You've probably heard the saying before, but it's definitely true. So I've definitely seen this firsthand. Um, I actually spend some money every once in a while on ads on Facebook, sometimes Instagram. Um, so you're definitely gonna need to put some money into advertising. If you already know a lot of people that want your product, that's great, but a lot of us aren't in that exact situation. So you'll have to reach an audience that you don't already know. And again, this could be a whole nother video. Learn kind of the demographics of your target audience. For me, it seems like older people are more often buying pet portraits. Um, overall, my customers usually are more female, not to say that males don't buy pet portraits. So just kind of learn those demographics. And then like with Facebook specifically, you can like target the audience you want to see your ad so that's really helpful so yeah just basically be willing to put money into advertising and not just advertising like also put money into business cards you're definitely gonna want business cards depending on what you're doing but most of the time you'll want them possibly putting down money for investments like enamel pins or like products that you'll need to buy wholesale I mean I get it's kind of tricky to put like a hundred dollars for like some enamel pins. so basically just don't be afraid to put a little bit money into your business or your brand for advertising for product um, just things like that. This is just a little bonus tip, but I hear a lot of people say this, specifically the YouTuber Bailey J. I'm sure you guys have heard of her. I'll put her little thing right here. But in her vlogs and such, she's always talking about how you want your income to come from multiple different places if you're an artist or like a crafter or something like that. She always talks about how YouTube like used to be her only thing, but then she's worried because different platforms seem to fall off like Vine and things like that. I mean, with different social medias and things like that, people can literally just decide to delete Instagram one day. Like there was even a scare for TikTok 
TikTok not that long ago. So if you're just reliant on like YouTube or Patreon or something like that, that's probably not a good idea. Just because if something falls through, that's all of your income. So just to give you guys some examples, you could try a few different things like YouTube, Patreon, Etsy, your own personal shop, Instagram, things like that. Just try to have a few different sources of income. Of course, if you're just doing like custom personal commissions, that's probably not gonna like fall through. But if your income's related to like a specific website or something like that, maybe try to have a few different incomes. So I think that's all that got cut off. So we will return to past Cecilia. The next little segment is make sure you have a good reputation. And what that means is basically you're building a brand and name for yourself and you don't want it to be kind of tainted by bad reviews and things like that. So just a few little tips for that is always have good communication if you can. Um, always try to reply to your customers pretty quickly, get the issue solved if there is one or any questions resolved. I kind of like to give myself weekends off in the nights just because I'd be going mad if I tried to like answer every email and question all the time. I'm not trying to make myself sound like a big deal. I don't get that many, but just for my mental health sake, I like to give myself like the weekends and the nights. But even then, depending on how severe the question or inquiry is, I'll respond respond then. So I'd say always have access to communication, always have your alerts on, things like that. Also on the same line with good communication is be honest about your deadlines. Don't tell a customer two weeks if you think that's going to be pushing it. Always give yourself a little bit more time, just maybe say three weeks, four weeks, something like that. Also, if you don't think you're going to meet a deadline, depending on like what you're doing, if it's a children's book illustrator, if it's a personal commission, etc., be honest about your deadlines. You know, people, people for the most part are understanding if something goes wrong. Every so often I'll have to tell a customer, hey, like my school is getting super busy. I have finals right now. So I might be like a few days later than I thought I would be with the packaging and they're always usually super cool about it. People overall are nicer and are gonna be understanding of your situation. Um, just try not to make those exceptions all the time, you know, only when it's really necessary. And then also along with that, make good product. Don't ever do a crappy job just to get it done. That's like the worst thing you can do for your reputation and brand. I was listening to this podcast and for the life of me, I tried to remember who it was, but I cannot. But um, just to kind of sum up what they were saying, they were saying, you know, if you're doing a $500 job, always do an $1,000 job because the thing is you're going to make your clients happier and one of the most important things with freelance and things like that is word of mouth. A good review can get you 10 jobs, a bad review can make you lose 20 jobs. So just go above and beyond for the customer, always do your best work and don't ever kind of like skimp out on your product. And the last little section, like I said earlier, if you guys have any questions, specific questions, you know, you can just drop them in the comments or you can feel free to like message me on my Instagram. Like I said, I would love to talk to you guys. Um, I know this can be a tricky topic and kind of hard to understand and a lot of little bits and bobs. So please feel free to message me. I swear I'm super friendly. I'll be nice to you and send you smiley faces. <laughs> yeah, hopefully this was a helpful video for you guys. If you have any specific tips you guys would like to offer, feel free to drop them in the comments. Also let me know if any of these tips were helpful for you. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. I know I haven't posted for like three months, but I'm going to be more active about it. I've just been super busy with school, so I apologize. But yeah, feel free to hit that subscribe button the notification bell thingy, all that good stuff. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and learned anything from it. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, good luck on your freelancing or your art career endeavors. Um, I wish you guys the best of luck. And yeah, bye guys. And now a huge thanks to all my wonderful patrons. If you want your name at the end of my videos, monthly prints sent to your door and other goodies, check out the link in the description.